okay, what is each sum? In this case, you may not recall fractions or you may not feel like you've learned them well, but this is the trick with fractions. You need to come up with equivalent amounts for the fractions that have common denominator. What's the common multiple of 3 and 8? Well, if you list, I mean, you can list them out. 3, 6, 9, 12, etc. All the way until you find it. Okay, listing 8 out as 8, 16, etc. until you run into it. Um, and that's a method. It's not a, the worst method in the world. Um, but there are better ways, and the better ways are to become familiar with your multiples. Uh, if you know multiplication really well, you'll know what all the multiples of 3 are. You'll know what all the multiples of 8 are. And then you can just say, oh, well, what's the first one that's there on both of them? It happens to be 24. Okay? So what you're going to do then is you're going to say, we need equivalent amounts that equal 24. And how do we do that? Well, let's go down here in the bottom for a second. We can say 7 thirds times what is going to give us 24 on the bottom? Well, 3 times what gives you 24? Well, 3 times 8 gives you 24. Okay, multiplying straight across the bottom. Well, the only way that we can multiply a fraction and not change it, change its value, is if we multiply by 1. 8 over 8 equals 1. So then we say, okay, if we multiply the bottom by 8, we've got to multiply the top by 8. And what do we get there? We get 56. So this then becomes 56. And we're going to do the same thing for negative 3 eighths. The negative will worry about just let's worry about 3 eighths okay 8 times what gives you 24 we already know that if 3 times 8 equals 24 right here the commutative property says we can move the order of them and we'll still get the same answer so 3 times 8 8 times 3 same thing and we're multiplying top and bottom by 3 and we get a 9 there now it happens to be that it is uh, a negative 9 right but there's still, that's what it is. So the one last bit is to know that with fractions, what the two numbers mean are related but different things. Okay? This says what they, the denominator says what they are. Okay? They are pieces that go together, that 24 of them go together to make a whole thing. Right? They're pieces of a certain size. That's what they are then this is how many you've got of those pieces of this size. Okay, so this is how many you got. This is what they are. So here, what they are, we're saying, okay, we've got 56 of these things, and when you add to that negative 9 of these things, well, the things themselves don't change. They still are what they are. They're still 24. And the whole idea is then how many you got. Well, you had 56 up here. Adding a negative 9 is the same as subtracting 9. So we're going to take 56 of these, take 9 of them away, and what are you left with? What's 56 minus 9? That is 47. Okay? Now that would be a fine answer, and if you put that, not going to have a problem with it. But if you're sophisticated, and you should become more sophisticated at math always when possible, you could say, if I wanted to turn this into a mixed number, how many 24s are here? How many groups of 24? Okay, well, there's obviously more than one group. I mean, um, there's obviously at least one is what I meant to say, right? Because it's more than 24. So you know you can get a group out of there. Can you get two? Well, what's 24 times two? Well, 24 times two is 48. That's, you actually don't have enough for a second group. So what you say then is, well, now we can get one group out of there. And if 24 times two is 48, that means you're going to be one short of another group of 24, meaning you will have 23 left over. And they still are what they are, 24 fourths. Okay, so what you've done, remember, because how many pieces of them, since they're 24 fourths, it means you need that many of them to get uh, a group. So you take that many of them away from here to make a group, and that's what you're left with. So this is also a fine answer.